Well, this week we are examining some of the key facets of Brexit. With a year to go, you have to assume that planning for our departure is firmly on track. Or is it? Here's the national picture, but on a regional and local level, councils are also devising projects to make their areas Brexit ready. It's particularly pertinent in places like Cornwall, which receives around 60 million in EU investment every year. The money's funded everything from road building to broadband improvement and university expansion, as well as skills programmes for workers. Katie Razzle went to Cornwall last week, just in time for the latest dump of bad weather, to find out what the plan is after we leave. A blustery morning at Newlyn Harbour as the Cornish coast meets the tail end of last week's mini East from the East. It's a year until Brexit, when we'll begin to chart our own course as a country. But what plans are afloat in this county for a confident departure? We were here two years ago, just ahead of the referendum, when much of the talk in New Lynn was about taking back our waters. The weather was certainly better on my last visit, and for many, a future outside the EU looked bright. When 56% of Cornish voters opted to leave, it was of course about more than just fish. But for the fishing community here, it played a big role. 320, 2 to 310, 320. At dawn, the latest catch goes on sale to local merchants. 310, Mike. Newland's fish market is being upgraded with around a million pounds of EU investment. But as we learned during the referendum campaign, money doesn't buy affection, particularly here. Oh, look at that man, I recognise him. We've come back to see Tony Howes, who we met on our last visit. I'm all loaded and virtually ready to go. He's spent almost five decades in Newland's fish trade. A nice selection of fresh fish on today. The majority of the fish caught round here is exported to Europe and the EU is threatening tariffs if the UK limits EU vessels' access to our waters. That lovely fresh fish. Off we go. Instead of going to the fish shop to choose their fish, the fish shop goes to them. Tony's never wavered in his support for Brexit. When we spoke before, he didn't doubt that the UK would vote to leave. My feeling's still the same. We're already selling fish to the continent. They're still going to want to buy it. We're still going to want to sell it. It's going to happen. As one of England's poorest regions, almost a tenth of all the money allocated by the EU for the country has been spent in Cornwall, more than a billion pounds in 20 years. When other countries realise how successful that we've been on doing what we're doing, then they're going to follow suit. Yeah, you wait and see, it's, it's, it's going to happen, yeah. So we've got to the first customer here now. The chance for us to find out what some of his regulars think. Good morning. First stop, a pub, which has benefited from EU funding. This manager voted out. Management courses, qualifications we've done for, the, that was all EU funded. And as your company, is it planning at all? Is it looking at where we're going to get the money f that, that came from the EU? Not, not particularly. Luckily, we've, we've thought ahead in the, in the last 18 months and, and, and done everything as much as we can just to put everyone with the funding we've already had. So everyone's, bit, you know, done now, so we should be all right for a few years. There you go, Anson. Right. See you tomorrow. Indeed. Lovely. Indeed. Thank you very much. All the best. Uh, Bye. The government has promised a shared prosperity fund for poorer regions after Brexit, without much detail yet. How confident are you that the government will fill the gap left by EU funds disappearing? I'm not very confident at all. I think we're easily forgotten down here. Hopefully, this gentleman will be in. Well, I see a lack of planning. Cornwall Council asked the government for an assurance that the funding that Cornwall has benefited from in the past would continue into the future. I don't, I haven't, don't recall having read that that assurance has been given. That worries me greatly. While we were here came the announcement of the UK-EU transition deal. The news that the EU will keep control of fisheries policy until 2020 didn't go down well with Tony and his colleagues. The transition deal stinks, doesn't it? They're selling us down the river yet again. As, as soon as we're out, and we should be out sooner, um, but uh, I think we just need an exclusion zone and it should be protected for our own fishermen. Why do they need to wait for such a long time? You know, if we're coming out of Europe, we're coming out of Europe, let's get it done. The mini beast from the east is easing off and the sky brightening. 
just along the coast from Newlyn, is Penzance's recently modernised Jubilee seawater pool. A chilly prospect right now, but there are plans to warm things up. When this geothermal dig is finished, a section of the pool will be heated naturally, with water pumped through hot rocks deep in the ground. The project's received one of the last injections of EU investment cash this region will enjoy. It's taking a little longer than expected, not unlike Brexit itself. Perceiving a lack of clarity at a national level, this county is determined to be as ready and resilient as it can be for Brexit. We've been given the summary to a still-evolving document called New Frontiers. It's this region's plan for what could happen here after Brexit. It's still in draft form and will be launched later in the spring. But it says if central government buys into the proposals, they could deliver more than 20,000 jobs to the local area and contribute £2 billion to the economy. While safeguarding traditional Cornish industries, the plan is to attract more high-skilled jobs here, particularly in renewable energy, the creative industries, space technology and lithium mining. A building programme to offer homes to these new workers would provide employment across the county, but, and here's the rub, this can't be done, according to the document, without more devolution, more power at a local level. They're all quite good, aren't they? Susan Stewart runs a local hotel and is involved in Penzance's regeneration projects. They're already looking to the private sector to fill the gap after Brexit. Do you think it's feasible that as a result of Brexit, Cornwall, you know, jobs could be created? I think so, because I think that Cornwall, as a local authority, knows more about its own economy and what it's going to take to boost that economy. And do you think Brexit is an opportunity for Cornwall and an opportunity for Penzance? I think it has to become one, and it's very clear that chunks of money that we might have relied on for infrastructure from Europe are not going to be there anymore. I think one thing it can do is, is change a mindset in that Cornwall can start to think more commercially because it has to think more commercially. You need to bring in the regional government, you need to bring in big government, but also to get it right, maybe we can engage the private sector and make the whole place become more investable. At this time of year, Cornwall, one of the world's biggest suppliers of daffodils, is a feast of yellow. When I first started farming here, the biggest problem we had was ever finding enough flower pickers. The answer for James Hosking was EU labour. His farm employs up to 100 Eastern Europeans each season. What planning is he doing ahead of any future change to the rules on freedom of movement? Actually, probably not as much as you'd think. I mean, personally, I, I don't believe we can uh, sort of close the doors to other Europeans because Quite frankly, I think uh, if you just take a county like Cornwall, you've got the hospitality industry, the vegetable industry, the flower industry, and virtually every industry is now reliant on them. Something will have to be done because otherwise the first thing you'll notice is literally within days, I don't believe there'll be any fresh vegetables on the supermarket shelves. So, with a year to go, not much planning here. More a certainty that Cornwall will get what it's requested. A special deal on low-skilled workers to avoid fields of unpicked daffodils and vegetables left to rot in the ground. Which would be a waste, given the trouble this company goes to to nurture plants like these lettuces for Cornish farmers. In the last year, James has begun exporting some of his daffs to the US. There's an added touch, one that may have even more potential after Brexit. Grand Britain. We've had a lot of great emails from all over the states of people who've seen the Union Jack and seen our web address on it who've, who've written to us saying how fantastic it was to see Cornish daffodils for sale in Montana or, or Washington or wherever they bought them. Others are also exporting Britishness. Take a guess what this is. It's tea being grown in Cornwall, albeit with a dusting of snow. In Japan they have a saying that the best tea grows under snow, so you need to have a balance of temperatures, but the tea... Well, that's that all right for today then, isn't it? That's all right for today. <laughs> Tregothnan is the first place in Britain to grow its own tea. They say it's caused a positive stir amongst tea lovers and aim to export 80% of their tea in future. There's a lot of thinking about Brexit. I mean, it doesn't obsess us on a day-to-day -day basis, but every week it comes up in management meetings. Obviously, there's a threat in some ways. You know, we've got to treat this as a serious business matter, but to look at the opportunity in it, so the whole 
premise of growing tea in the UK was to take a British product out to the world. The world doesn't owe us a living. The Brexit ship has sailed, and here they're determined to make it work for Cornwall. At county level, that means a new industrial strategy. For individual businesses, a combination of carry on as before and offer more to the world. But Cornwall still needs investment to flourish. Until it knows more about how the EU's funding will be replaced, 